Hey everybody, I'm Matt Hernandez. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to underexpose the background to make your Little League pictures not look like stereotypical Little League pictures. And I'm gonna use these two knuckleheads. <laughs> Okay, so it's June and there's a few clouds, but not a whole lot. It's pretty hot, very sunny. So anytime that happens, you wanna keep your client in the shade if possible, because they're gonna squint. If not, also it just gets way too hot being out in the sun, the straight sunlight like that. So we're behind my studio. We've got the wall, the sun's over here. So it's created some shadow here, which we're losing pretty quickly. But I've got the scene set up back here just to show you that you don't have to have to be at the ballpark to take little league pictures. You can really, be creative and do it anywhere. Okay, so we've got two apple boxes. I'm gonna have them stand on those to get them higher because my goal is to get the sky behind them and get that horizon line as low as possible. We've got some trees in the background. I just wanna get those on the bottom of the frame. Light is coming in from camera right. So I've got an edge light set up here to kind of mimic the sunlight. And then I've got an Octabox, a Westcott Switch Octa L, which is I think 48 inches is the main light because there's two kids in it. So a lot of times with siblings, you know, you wanna, you wanna make sure that they're relatively close together, but you need a pretty decent sized modifier to make sure that they're evenly lit. And I've got it on a boom here, a boom arm on a C-stand, just to kind of have it in the middle of the frame. It's a, it's a little bit to the left, but it's, it's still boomed over just so that it lights them both evenly. So the first thing that I do in this situation is I always tell my students or anybody that asks, about photography that how I get my skies to look dark and dramatic that I start from the background and work my way up. I light the background up. So the sky, you're gonna take an, if you're inside, you might light the bleachers or whatever, but you're gonna take an ambient shot before you do anything. Same inside, whether you're doing it in a gym or outside with just the sky. So I've got my Sony a7R5 and I have the 24 to 70 lens because I might need to shoot wide to kind of distort the background. Anytime you shoot wider, the background's gonna look further away, which will benefit us here because of, we want the trees to look smaller behind them. So the sky is more prominent in the frame. You don't wanna shoot super, super wide because it'll distort things closer to the camera, but maybe kind of in between. And um, so first, the first thing I wanna do is take a shot of the ambient, like I said, and see what the exposure is gonna be. So. Let's turn my remote off real quick. So I'm gonna, both lights are gonna be off to start with and we're just gonna take a picture of what I want the background to be. One of the great things about these, about mirrorless cameras now is flipping out the screen because you don't have to lay down anymore. You can just kind of put the camera down like this. So I've got a meter in my camera that's gonna tell me what my exposure is. I'm at one two thousandth of a second F8 ISO 100 and it says it's minus two which means it's two stops underneath the correct exposure. So let's just take a shot real quick and see. Okay, good. All right, so that looks, that looks about right. Um, that I don't always get too technical with how much I underexpose. I just do it, I eyeball it and make sure that it looks right. I'm gonna go up two stops. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop down just to see what the correct exposure would be. So I'm gonna do, so one click on your shutter is gonna be a third of a stop. So if I'm two stops under, I'm gonna do six clicks. So I'm gonna go down from one two thousandth to one five hundredth. Okay, yeah, so that, so that, the first frame looked much better. I like that a lot better, it's a lot darker. That does look pretty natural, which is fine for, for some clients, but for Little League, for sports, I think the darker is gonna be definitely better. So. So our settings are 1 2000th F8, like I said, ISO 100. So to use these Westcott FJ 400s, the strobes that I'm using, to get the camera to fire, we have to enable high speed sync, which is great. It can freeze action with higher shutter speeds and it can underexpose the sky. There are some drawbacks to it. I actually have another video on high speed sync and neutral density filters and the difference in the two. And I'm gonna link that in the description below if you wanna go watch that because I'm gonna use a neutral density filter today because I don't want, so high speed sync is anything above the camera's native sync speed. With this camera in particular, it's one 250th of a second. And like I said, we were at one 2000th. So if I go down, I went down to one 500th to get the, to get the normal ambient exposure, which is exposed correctly. So if I go down one more stop, three more clicks, it's gonna be one 250th, which is the sync speed. So in order to, to, to shoot at that, 
and not have the drawbacks of high speed sync because we're not doing anything fast action moving right now, so it doesn't matter, we don't have to freeze action. So I would prefer the frame to be more even because you do get some, some banding. There's like a, the left side of the frame or the top side of the frame, depending on where you're looking at the, if you're horizontal or vertical, is gonna be brighter, like the top will be if you're horizontal and the bottom will be darker when you're using high speed sync. So I don't want that. You also lose a little bit of power, which is, you know, that's fine if you're shooting action, I'm, I'm willing to compensate those things, but not in this situation because we're just doing a portrait. So I'd rather shoot at the sync speed of the camera. So I have a breakthrough photography ND filter here that I'm gonna put on the front. And I do this with Little League pictures or portrait sessions a lot if there's not gonna be any movement just because I want the frame to be clean and if I can shoot at the sync speed of the camera, then that's just gonna, it's just gonna be a little bit, a little bit better. Like I said, high speed sync has its place, but in this, in this situation, not necessary. So now we're at 1 250th f, f8 instead of 1 2000th, but we're gonna have the same exposure, or we should. So I'm gonna get down and take another shot just to make sure that we look okay. And that looks exactly the same, so we're good. So now we've got the ambient exposed for, we've got the background the way we want it to look. So now we're gonna bring the little leaguers in, our kids, and we're gonna turn the edge light on. So we, we lift the ambient, the background first, and then we're gonna light the edge light second, and then the key light will be third. So we're gonna do this one now. It's got a, I've got an FJ400 back here with a deep focus reflector on it. There's no diffusion or anything like that, and it's pointed not directly at their back. It's kind of out, out of the frame to the right, but it's mimicking the direction the sun's coming from. If you look at the trees, you can tell it's coming from camera right, so that's where I've got the light. Now, you don't want it to creep around too much because it could, it could light their nose or part of their face, and it might not look too flattering. So we want it back enough that it's gonna actually just edge light them. Okay guys, you wanna hop up? So with siblings or friends, a lot of times, I'll, I'll tell one of them to get a glove, one of them to get a bat, just so they're not doing the exact same thing. Okay, Ryder, come stand on this one, put your glove on, Landry up here. Okay, so I'm gonna have them stand back to back, but not flat back to back, I'm gonna have them angle about, I don't know how many degrees that is, but about halfway. Good feet nice and nice and, or legs nice and straight, feet about shoulder width apart. Make sure you stand up tall, chest up. Pull the jersey down. Pull, so something simple, so he's, he's right-handed, so I'm not gonna have him put both hands on the bed, I'm just gonna have him lean this one down and then have, have him just put his hand in his glove. So you guys both look at me, okay? All right, that looks good. Okay, all right. So we're gonna turn the edge light on first And I can control my lights from the FJ X3S. I've got a Sony camera, so it's a specific Sony trigger from Westcott. So I can, I've got my main light on group A, and I've got my, my edge light on group B, so I'm gonna put A to sleep by pressing that side button. So B is the only one on. I've got it set to seven, and we're gonna see what that looks like. I think a full power, there's nine stops of power in these lights, I think that'd probably be too much. You wanna have detail in your highlights. Okay, Landry, tilt your head this way a little bit. Okay. Okay, good, don't move guys. Okay, that looks really good. So you can definitely see the edge light. There is detail in their skin. That's exactly what we want. We just don't want it to be too bright, but we want it to be brighter than the key light. So let's turn that one on now. Take it off sleep mode. Now I'm gonna have this one at nine out of nine because I have one layer of diffusion in this Octa L here. Just to show you real quick. So here's the diffusion that goes on the outside. So this has a silver interior and the light just shoots through the back of it. So this diffuses the light, makes it softer and spreads it out. And then we have another layer that goes around the outside, but I have that taken off because diffusion softens light, but it also causes you to lose power. So because it's so bright out here, we wanna be able to light them up. We've got the camera settings set pretty high with that, and especially with that neutral density filter on. So we're gonna have to have a lot of light to, to get through and light them up. So that's why we had to take this outer layer off. So we're just gonna stick that there. And I just know from experience that I'm probably gonna have to shoot at full power because it is so bright. If it was later in the day or earlier in the morning or if it was, if it was overcast, I might not have to, but especially with this diffusion on this light, I'm gonna have to. That one's not at full power because the light isn't diffused at all. And those deep focus reflectors from Westcott, they actually have a really high output. So 
I, there's no, if I shot at nine out of nine that close to them, it, the, their skin would be blown out. All right, guys, look at me real quick. All right, that's perfect. So that's just enough light. I think it looks great. So now we're actually gonna take a couple real shots and see if we get something we like. All right, um, so make sure you stand up tall, chest up, both feet flat, okay? Right or turn your head this way just a little bit, right there, good. Landry, pull your head out. Okay, both of you be serious, chest up. Keep that head out, good. All right, don't move, look tough. I know that's hard for both of you to look tough. Yeah. <laughs> pull your head out, good. Landry, turn your head this way just a little bit and pull it out a little bit more. There you go, good, close your mouth. Ryder, pull your chin up a little bit. You're, you're giving me duck lips, relax your mouth a little bit. <laughs> All right, that was a good laughing picture. All right, good. All right, let's do one more serious, guys. Landry, pull your head out. Good. There you go, nice. All right, perfect. So anytime anything funny like that happens, like I usually try to take serious little league pictures, but you've always got to be ready if something funny happens because if they laugh, that's going to be a real smile. So be ready to take the picture if, if just anticipate that happening because it might. It comes up at random times sometimes. So, okay, so that looks great. Um, if I was inside in the gym, I would, I, would, I would approach it the exact same way. I would expose ambient and then I would turn edge lights on and then the main light on. Or sometimes I might light the bleachers. So then I would do ambient, then light the bleachers, then do the edge, then do the main. And that's, that, that makes things way easier to work from back to front like that because if you do it the opposite way, then your settings can get all mixed up and you start trying to adjust things then you end up wasting a bunch of time. But if you do it this way, it's gonna work every time. All right guys, that does it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a like. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, please like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.